they get a divorce. A lot of that is due to sex, sex issues. So I was like, wow, I wanted to, you know, like serve my community. I wanted to learn more about why this is such a big issue. I wanted to contribute to helping um, people understand why that's such an important issue and how to prevent it to happen. Welcome to another episode coming at you from ChooseYourRelationships.com Offer of Love Can't Wait, which can be found on Amazon.com So today I have a special guest She's a sexual communication expert that helps busy people create and maintain their relationship they want through modern methods She can show you how to reevaluate, restructure, communicate expectations, goals, and desires She's a tenured professor of relational and sexual communication at California State University Fullerton, an award-winning researcher. She has a podcast that I really like called Love Bites. She recently gave a TEDx talk titled Become Sexually Powerful that highlights her 5,000 participants examining variables that predict sexual satisfaction and her journey being an immigrant from Thailand to a sexually confident woman. My special guest today is Dr. Tyra. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, Lopez. Yeah, so what part of Thailand are you from? I am from Bangkok. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I've been there. Um, I always Ooh. said, yeah, I've been there. I've been to, uh, you know, some people call it, uh, is it Pattaya or Pattaya? How do you say it? Pattaya, yeah, that's okay. about two hours drive from Bangkok. Yeah, so I've been to Bangkok. I've been to um, a couple of spots in Thailand. You know, I always said awesome. Yeah, I always said if things went to hell, I would move to Thailand. Oh yeah, <laughs> I think I think a lot of my friends say the same thing. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's one of my favorite places. Oh, to, thank uh, you. Visit. Always lovely to hear that. Yeah. So, how did you get started on this? um long journey i would say because you're you're doing a lot of work you're doing a lot of different things um you're doing things that are taboo uh -huh. <laughs> in, in yeah. society so how'd you get started so uh can i tell you a little story sure so i grew i was born in thailand and i grew up in bangkok and despite the media portraying bangkok and thailand to be very sexual it is not uh, yeah. Thai culture is very sexually conservative. Uh, so I grew up in a conservative culture. My parents never talked about sex. Uh, we weren't supposed to talk about sex. There's no sex ed in my school. No sex ed. Not even the health class. So we were, yeah, we were kind of sex dumb. <laughs> we were definitely sex and relationships stupid because I never received any kind of education. So in my teen years, I started feeling very curious. Uh, and like any curious teens, I resort to the internet. So the first thing I did was I tried to search up for some porn. And back then, growing up, when I was a teenager, we had a dial-up internet. So I had to, it was a... Uh, it was scary because I had to wait for it to load. Kids these days have no idea how easy they get. But like I was waiting for it to load and like I was afraid my parents would walk in and this and that. So like I had a lot of that, you know, uh, curiosity that I try to find answers on the internet in which not a great place. Uh, porn is not a great place to find answers about healthy sex uh, life. So that was kind of like the... The feeling I had growing up was like I, I knew I didn't know anything. So I was very anxious a lot of times when it comes to relationships. I didn't know how to behave. Uh, I didn't know how to have sex in a way that I felt was uh, the right way to do it. Uh, and when I first moved to America, my good friend took me to a sex toy shop, a big one. And I've never, ever been into one before. 
So that was my first pivotal moment of like, wow, there's so much out there that I just didn't know about. So in grad school, I studied relationships and how communication functions within a relationship and how it serves a relationship. So the more I learn, the more I realize that one of the biggest issues that people have in long-term relationships uh, is sex. It's sex related. So a lot of people break up, they get a divorce. A lot of that is due to sex, sex issues. So I was like, wow, I wanted to, you know, like serve my community. I wanted to learn more about why this is such a big issue. I wanted to contribute to helping um, people understand why that's such an important issue and how to prevent it to happen. So that's kind of how I became uh, a sex professor. Uh, after I finished my PhD, I got a job as a professor at Cal State Fullerton. And it's my dream job. Being a professor is very fulfilling. So yeah, I, I've been teaching this class for many years now. And I started my podcast last year. I started my coaching practice two years ago. So it's been quite a journey from knowing nothing and in a shush shush place to now, you know, I talk about sex everywhere I go. <laughs> I was just at a dinner party. I was talking about sex. <laughs> I love it. So yeah, you know, the funny thing is a lot of people, they, they don't want to have bad sex, but at the same time, they don't want to talk about it. <laughs> no, I know. So it's like, how would we solve it? Solve it in silence? <laughs> I don't know. But yeah, um, communication is extremely important. Yeah, but how did you how did you have the confidence to know that you could uh, start teaching people how, how, about sex? Yeah. So after finishing my PhD, uh, I got this job as a professor. So I was teaching relational communication and sexual communication. My confidence, I would say, came from two aspects. One is my own sexual awakening journey. I've done a lot of work to become a sexually confident person that I am today. I was very sexually anxious before. And anyone that knew me from my early 20s would know that. Uh, so I, I went through my own journey as well in sexual awakening and doing everything I can. I saw a therapist. I started meditating. I started uh, journaling. So I was doing a lot of things to improve myself. But at the same time, the confidence academically came from uh, preparing for, you know, a semester long lecture for the sexual communication class and it starts you know this lecture starts from the very uh the very beginning of sexuality what is sex what is gender what is sexual orientation and all of that and then it goes into your sexual debut which is a new term for losing your virginity we no longer say that because it's a negative connotation really like, are you are you dirty and awful now that you lost your virginity it's wow. not true, right? So now we use sexual debut, which is a lot sexier. Like, when was your sexual debut, Lopez? Uh, 17. Okay, yeah. So, like, I was about 16, going on 17 as well. That's uh, the average age of American kids' uh, sexual debut. So, yeah, we talk about sexual debut. Um, I have to review so much research in order to prep for these lectures for the whole semester. So my confidence, uh, a lot of the knowledge, confidence come from that. Okay. So how did you, how did you come from Thailand here? Was it for, for, for go to the university or that's how I got started? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I came here for school. Got you. Yeah. Man. So how did you, uh, Let's move to the TEDx talk. How, how did you get into that? Did you want to do that or was that strategically planned or what? Um, I have always wanted to share uh, my studies in like a public speaking setting. And I think TED talks are, I love them. Like every time I go to the gym, I watch one. And you know, uh, when I'm on a treadmill, like 
time flies when you watch something on YouTube. Like you can watch this show, the love can't wait, right? Like it time flies. So working out is easier. So I usually I love watching TED talks, and one of my dreams uh, growing up was like, oh, I want to have my own TED talk. So when the opportunity came by um, for TEDx. I uh, jumped on it and I said, "Yeah, like I want to do a TED talk about my topic, something I'm passionate about, which is sexual confidence." And it's so I was lucky because I just got uh, finished. I just finished that study that was based on five thousand and two <laughs> subjects uh, mm. participants. I just got done with that, so I was like, "Oh wow, I have a really cool data that I want to talk about. Can I do a TEDx?" On this, and that committee was like, "Yeah, talk about sex. That's cool." So I was really excited to have a platform where I can talk uh, openly and honestly about sex and my sex study. That's great, you know. Um, someone has to talk about a lot of this stuff because you know, yeah. a lot of times talking about sex coming from a guy's point of view, people are kind of like, "Ah." Oh. <laughs> <laughs> a little too much, but when a woman talks about it, people are, they lean towards it. Like, it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah uh, I can see that. I can see yeah. how like male sex coaches are like it's harder to approach them. Yeah, versus yeah. like female sex coach. Yeah, I don't, um, I don't get in the details about <laughs> sex very often, but I will. If someone asks me a question, they say, "Hey, have you ever went to?" This kind, this kind of party, I'd be like, yeah, I've, I've been there. Or, or have you ever met this type of woman? I'm like, yeah, I have. You know, but I don't. <laughs> but I, but I notice when I get into details of what happens, then it's kind of like, oh man, you're kind of, uh, you're kind of out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but if, uh, but if it's a woman saying the same thing, and she's going into deep details. Is 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 people respond to it very differently, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, they still think it's out there, but they think it's more relatable. Like I exactly. talk about it on my podcast. I talk about like my experience going to sex parties uh, here in Los Angeles, in New York, in London. I talk about my experience at sex clubs, and like we have a, a an episode on sex club 101 Like, what are the do's and don'ts? I talk about my experience in a threesome. I talk about a lot of uh, sexual experiences, trying to normalize uh, a variety of sexual experiences. Because I think it's okay. Yeah, I think um, I think that I, you know, I'm not a real big fan of of, of sex parties. <laughs> uh, I'm not because th- at least the ones I've been to, I'm not attracted to a lot of those people, <laughs> <laughs> and they're old, usually older than me. And I'm like, oh, um, no, no. What locations? Like, you don't have to go into the specifics, but what what city were you in? Oh, Atlanta. Atlanta. Okay. Atlanta. Atlanta has some cool ones. Yeah, but I haven't been there. (laughs) (laughs) Atlanta has cool sex clubs. Yeah, but I haven't been there. Now, (laughs) now, there's certain ones that, you know, you have to get invited. Well, all of them you have to get invited to for the most part. But, I mean, I've heard different stories, but I haven't been to those. You know? <laughs> like, I want to go to the hot ones. Where are they? Exactly. But um, I have been to some decent ones, but, you know, due to my friend or whatever. But uh, for the most part, most of the people, they, they're in their 50s and 60s. So I, like, I don't know. You know, <laughs> they were, that's not a match. <laughs> Atlanta is such a cool scene, though. Like one of my one of the best dessert places in the world is in Atlanta and it's uh have you ever been to cafe intermesso yeah it's my favorite place I love that my best friend lives in Atlanta okay okay yeah I've lived there for uh 10 years I just moved three months ago oh to where Charlotte Charlotte New North Carolina yeah awesome yeah yeah so it's a little smaller uh-huh. Slower here. That's busy, yeah. Yeah, I like it that way. You know. <laughs> so, so are you a fan of like like uh, parties? Um, I would say a fan is a strong word. I would say I do like to attend uh, fun, engaging parties. Yes. 
Yeah, not all of them because I know uh, there are a lot of shitty ones. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. when I know the organizers, typically when uh, when I know them well, I would I will go. Yeah, see, that's the mistake that I made. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't know them personally. Oh and, um, yeah. Yeah, I didn't know them personally. But the ones here where I'm at now, yeah, I actually know them. I met them, you know, before I even thought about going. So it's cool. You know. Gosh, I didn't know they have sex parties in North Carolina. I thought, things, North, I thought North Carolina's uh, conservative. Yeah, they are, but they do it on the down low. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, they do it on the down low. Totally. So, I have uh, uh, some friends here that that are like, I was like, hey, can you come on my podcast and talk about your experience? Because you're a very experienced uh, sex party organizer. And uh, they're like, oh, no, we're Republicans. We don't want to talk about that on TV or like on podcasts. I'm like, OK, that's OK. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's talk about what made you start the podcast. Love Bites. Yeah, I think. uh this episode is brought to you by manscape.com. They just launched their brand new ultimate premium collection and they just hooked me up. You get the body wash, shampoo, conditioner. You get the uh, deodorant. You even get the lip balm. And you eat and you get the body spray. So all you got to do is go to manscaped.com and use the promo code can't wait 20 That's can't wait 20 and you're going to get all of this, all of this. It's a big package, you know, plus the lip balm. All you got to do is use the promo code can't wait 20 and go get yours while supplies last. The main drive for me is how much I love teaching uh, in the classroom. And one day I was talking to my partner and I'm like, man, I wish more people sit in my classroom. Uh, I wish more people are learning from my class, uh, but I can't because it's a college class. You have to enroll. You have to be a part of the university. How can I bring the kind of enlightenment and knowledge and normalization about sex to the mass? Uh, and I thought, well, I want to do two things. Uh, TV show and a podcast because podcast is easy. People can listen to anytime. They can tune into any episode of the topic they're interested in, uh, which is cool. Because like, if you wanted to just learn about threesomes, just go to that episode. If you want to learn about STDs, go to one episode. So I thought it was a really cool format to talk about sex. Uh, also censorship. I can't talk about sex blatantly on Instagram or TikTok. I get censored. So I thought yeah. podcast is the best way because I can say what the F ever I want. And, you know, it's educational. It's truthful. It's realistic. So I love the podcast uh, format. But uh, the TV show is coming up. So there's that. Oh, really? cool. Yeah. Oh, congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. So it's going to be surrounding what you're already doing already. Yeah. Yeah. I can't talk about it much yet. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, but yeah, yes, yeah. it's it's definitely about sex and normalization of sex talk. Great. So, what's the difference between a tenured professor and a, I guess, a regular professor at a university? Yeah. yeah. So, uh, at the university system in the United States, but also um, around the world, at a large university, there's three types of educators. There okay. is a uh, tenure or tenure track professor. There's adjunct professor uh, and there's lecturers. Uh, so oh. lecturers are hired based on class. So like, oh, mm -hmm. here, we're going to hire you for these two classes. You come oh, teach okay. these two classes. You don't have to do any research. You don't have to advise or mentor any students. Just come teach these two classes and we pay you per class. That's lecturer. And then the adjunct professor is very similar. Uh, an adjunct professor is uh, paid per class, but typically they can be full time, meaning they can teach like five at a university and they can get like all of the other benefits like health insurance, being a part of the organization and those things. They are also not, uh, ex they're not expected to do any research. That's the adjunct professor. So they just teach. 
And then there's tenure and tenure track professor, which is what I do, or who I am. Uh, it's、um, part teaching, part researching, part advising. So in a、mm. university system,、uh, tenure or tenure track professors、uh, are the kind of core group of professors in the department. And then when we need more people to teach other classes, we hire adjunct professors and lecturers. Well, so I, mean, I am expected to do a lot of research. But that means you can't get fired as easily. <laughs> I cannot get fired. <laughs> I actually now that I am tenured,、uh, yeah. which means I got promoted. So I got early tenure. Usually it takes about、uh, six to eight years, depending on what institution. I got it in five years. So、mm. now I feel a lot more protected talking about sex in a very, you know, raw and honest way because、yeah. I can't get fired. <laughs> yeah, I met a guy, a professor. This was years ago. He said.、Uh, He was working at,、uh, I think, USC, and he said,、uh, "I can say what I want to say." He said,、mm-hmm. "They can't fire me." I said, "He said, 'No, I'm tenured. They can't get rid of me.'" I said, "Oh, okay." And you know, I, I kind of <laughs> let it. I didn't really know what it, that meant until later, and I was like, "Oh, okay, I understand now." <laughs> right? Yeah. So even like among professors, there's like different rankings. Okay. Yeah. So being tenured is like the most. I would say it's the most like coveted、uh, position because it's the most secure, the most pay,、um, and then we are, you know,、uh, more recognized in the field. Okay. So how do you go about bringing guests on your podcast? Yeah, so、uh, two types of guests. One is a guest that have a very particular sexual experience they want to share. So, for example, I had a guest on who had experienced erectile dysfunction all of his life,、oh, and he、Lord. was talking about his experiences in overcoming it.、Uh, so, there's that's the first type of guest. The second type of guest is a.、Uh, An expert. So、uh, recently, I had Dr. Lori Brado. She is the leading、oh, yeah. researcher of female sexual arousal. So she's one of my guests. The other one is like Daniel Saint. He is the founder of NSFW. It is the most,、uh, the biggest sex club in New York. Oh、uh, yeah, so yeah, yeah. He would be like an expert. Yeah. So I I have like two types of guests. Gotcha. Yeah, I love it. It's a、uh, it's fun. I learn a lot every time. Yeah. So, do people come to you and and、uh, for advice as far as、um, how do、uh, you know how do you talk to your your spouse or your girlfriend or your,、uh-huh. your husband about sex? What what do you tell them? How do you introduce your? Maybe you want to do. Maybe you want to spice things up in a relationship. But what do you tell these men and women? Yeah,、uh, I often talk about how things have to be gradual. Um, and you have to make sure that you're mindfully communicating your desires. So if people go, you know,、uh, out of the blue right after sex, you go, "I want to try something else." Like the other person will feel like, "What's wrong with what we have now?"、Yeah. Right? They get defensive. So that's not a good communication strategy. A good communication strategy is gradual、um, and mindful. So let me give you an example. Uh, if you want to try something new, right? Let's say、uh, you want to try a new kind of toy、uh, that it's a little kinky, and you've never had it in your relationship, so it's not a part of the relationship repertoire.、Uh, you may start talking about how you know,、uh, wow, like I've seen this in a magazine, or I've heard, I saw this on TikTok or Instagram. It looks super interesting. Have you ever heard of it? Right, so kind of go with like, have you ever heard of this topic, whatever it is,、uh, and then you know about one week or two weeks later, like started talking about it more, so gradual, and then you know come to terms with it at some point, like, hey, so I've been thinking about this, you know, like we talked about it last week, I kind of want to try it. How do you feel about that? So. Always go with like I want to、uh, explore something. How do you feel about that? Rather than like you never want to do something, you always do this, right? So never blame your partner for anything、uh, because it doesn't work. But go with like I'm really curious. How do you feel about it? I agree, a hundred percent. Yeah, because you know、uh, most people are already 
don't want to talk about it anyway. No. But they, but they want to do it. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So like a threesome, for example, I think a lot of um, couples, all kinds of couples, all kinds of sexual orientations, uh, you know, a lot of them want to try it, but they don't know how to bring it up because they're afraid that their partner will go, what's wrong with just me? Yeah. So gradual is definitely uh, a good way to go. Yeah, and a lot of times, uh, uh, for example, having a threesome, I thought I wanted to have a threesome. Uh huh. I mean, it was a good thought, right? <laughs> until it, until that opportunity came, and I was like, I don't really want to do this again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, according to Justin Lay Miller's research, uh, he studied like 3,000 something people about sexual fantasies and Americans' number one sexual fantasy uh, is a threesome. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. their number one sexual fantasy, but not necessarily something they actually want to do or... Or think it's a good idea afterwards. It's just a fantasy. It's number one fantasy, which is super interesting. Like I thought it would be way kinkier, but no. The number one fantasy for Americans is a threesome. Yeah, it's yeah, it's a threesome. Yeah, it's a, a lot of people talk about it. I said, hey, you know what? Maybe you should. If you ever get the opportunity to do it, maybe you should just be open to it and see if you can yeah. go through with it. <laughs> yeah, I think a lot of communication is needed because yeah. sometimes like, you know, a couple will go to a bar and then all of a sudden one one of the partners invited a third person and yeah. the other person feels ambushed. Oh, yeah, that's the worst. Yeah, way. that's terrible. You can't yeah. just bring the person home and be like, hey, let's have a threesome. That's terrible. That's terrible. And me personally, I would have to know the, the third person personally. I, I can't do the stranger i know that's not gonna right? work no no <laughs> <laughs> now some people would say well they don't want to know the third person because that makes it easier for them to go through with it and they'll just do whatever they want and they never have to see the person ever again i said oh okay i can't do that <laughs> right right so you you like like a little emotional connection at least yeah right? yeah yeah, yeah. I feel like that too. Like if I really like the the person, but then again, for some people, it's like they want to they want to try a threesome, kind of like out of sight, out of mind. Yeah, like with a, a stranger abroad, and like that's it. We'd never see each other again. Yeah, exactly. So, are there studies that show that you know? Because there's a lot of um, you know people been married for a long time and life gets in the way and they'll stop having sex so are there studies that actually like uh with couples that say hey when these people stop having sex they usually you know kind of grow apart mm -hmm. yes yes there are and actually studies concluded that uh having sex once a week uh can keep the relationship together uh, and now, now, let's premise that. I'm not saying, if you have a shitty relationship, even if you have sex oh, one, <laughs> once a week, it's not going to help. But let's no. say you have a good, stable relationship, yeah. but you forget about sex, right? You get too busy, you get too ca caught up with stuff. Uh, still, make time for intimacy, connection, make time for sex at least once a week. Yeah, yeah. studies show that the happiest couples have sex once a week, at least. Yeah, I learned I learned that the hard way because you know sometimes you get so busy being busy yeah. doing whatever you're doing, and then and you 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 kind of don't do the same thing you used to do. Right, right. And before you know it, you be like, "Hey, what's going on?" <laughs> the more comfortable you get, the less effort you put in. Exactly, you know. So I learned, but at the same time, if it's not too late, you can save the relationship. Right. I've done it twice. <laughs> wow. I've done yeah. it twice. Now, sometimes it, uh, some couples, it can be just too far gone. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the other person might have drifted away. Or even you might have drifted away too far. Mm -hmm. And if that happens, yeah, it's probably not going to, you probably won't be able to save the relationship. But no. Yeah. But that the, the sex is very powerful. 
in relationships. Yeah, baby. Yeah. Sex is so powerful that a lot of religion try to make it an evil thing so yeah. that people don't engage in it. It is so powerful. Yeah, yeah. it really is. I mean, yeah. sex and like sexual attraction, you know, break up homes, millions of homes. Yeah, <laughs> it's Be powerful. Yeah, and well, I think the the purpose of religion was to kind of push a lot of that down, right? The temptation down and all that stuff, mm -hmm. you know. But I mean, I always say a, attraction is supersedes religion, uh, income, the education. It's so powerful. Exactly, you know. So um, I love your podcast. You know. Um, Thank you. So yeah, I think um, I actually shared it a couple, couple, a couple of weeks ago. You know, when I first heard your intro, I was hooked. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't she sound amazing? Yeah, you know, I was hooked, man. So, so you should come out. You should come out with a book talking about a lot of this stuff. Right. Yeah, I'd love to have enough time to work on a really high quality book. I wouldn't want to just, you know, pump anything out quickly. Yeah. Pump anything out quickly. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't want to do that. Uh, I really yeah. want to. I want it to be very fresh, uh, very insightful and honest. Uh, and I just haven't had the actual time yeah. to do that. Yeah, because of so many projects. So, the TV show will come out first, but definitely a book is on my list. My lifelong dream and well, a goal is to uh, become a New York Times bestseller. And yeah, I, you 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 do it. I need to make it happen. Thank you yeah. so much. That's so kind. Yeah, you do it easily, you know. <laughs> so, how is your like relationship status right now? Oh, I'm married, and you know, yeah. I have I have friends. I have the best relationships today. Ooh, tell me more. Ever. Really, I have, uh, I have, you know, I think I have the most supportive friends and people around me more today than ever. Mm. You know, sometimes uh, if it wasn't for them, I don't know where I would be. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I don't take things for granted like I used to. Not saying that I did take things for granted, but I think when I was in my 20s, I didn't, I just wasn't conscious of what I was doing. Uh, most of the time, I didn't really make the effort to spend time with my friends, or call them, even even if it's a five minute call, you know, even mm -hmm. if it's a text. Mm -hmm. But today, I'm very conscious of the people that I'm around, you know, and I um make a uh, uh, you know uh, effort to call them, reach out to them in some way, shape, or form, you know, and spend time yeah. with them as much as I can. I love that. I try to do the same too. I think, uh, like you know, well, high quality, just social relationships, makes life a lot more fun. Yeah, I mean, I always say the the quality of your life is probably is dictated upon your relationship that you have with people. One hundred percent. Yeah. One thousand percent. So. If people wanted to follow you and work with you and listen to your podcast, where, where would they go to? Yes. So uh, I would say you can go to my website, lovebites.co, L-U-V-B-I-T-E-S dot C-O. Uh, everything. Wow, that's cool. <laughs> uh, everything is on lovebites.co. You can find how to work with me. You can find friend coaching programs that I do. One of them that uh, is really popular is called vanilla crossing uh so i help navigate uh, long-term couples that have had vanilla sex for so long try something new so it's called vanilla crossing and that's one of my popular programs uh and then my podcast is on there too my podcast is love bites by dr tara um thank you so much for having me yeah hey the pleasure the pleasure was really all mine really <laughs> <laughs> you know so there you have it like Share this episode. Tell me what you think below. Until next time, we out. Peace. Did you like that video? If you want more of that, it's right here. Boss Slap Secrets on Amazon.com. And share this video. Until next time, I'm out. Peace. Peace.